Hey there, my friend, Ives here. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to implement slow motion in your game. The advantage of this approach is that it can be used for both 2D and 3D projects with no code changes at all. So let's get to it. Here we are in Godot. And, as usual, before we start, let's see what we already have. Here is our level C, it's gonna be used for testing. And it has a bunch of rigid bodies, a static body, like a platform for them. They will fall on it and bounce a little bit. And this progress bar is just an animated progress bar that will also help us see how the game is worth, how quick it is. And we also have a script file for the level, but it's empty. Okay, so we're gonna start working on our slow-mo controller, and we're gonna create a separate node. You might ask, why don't we create the slow-mo controller inside of our level script? It's a nice question, and there are two reasons. First of all, you should keep your code as clean as you can, what means don't put unnecessary functionality. In other words, a level must contain levels functionality. It, sh it should not control your player, it should not control your timer. It's a level. And the second one is, you want to save your time. You probably want to make it a modular system that you can put it in and remove it if you need painlessly, with little additional effort. So, without further ado, let's get to work. Create a new scene, it's gonna be a node. Rename it to slow-mo controller and save it. Attach a script to it. Let's define the variables that will tell the desired time scale that we want. Here they are. So normal time scale is 1.0 and the slow-mo time scale half of the game's normal speed. We also need a variable that will tell us if the slow-mo is active or not. And it's quite easy. It's a boolean variable called slow-mo active that's false by default. And we will change it when we start or stop our slow motion. And now as we have it all, we can create our methods to change the time scale. And that's basically it. What we really change is the time scale variable inside of the engine class of Godot. It's a built-in class and you can access it from anywhere, so it's very easy to work with it. But now let's think a little bit ahead. In your level, when you want to call or deny slow-mo, you constantly check if the slow-mo is active or not. So why don't we create a function that requests the slow-mo mode change and decides if we need to turn it on or to turn it off. That's very easy, once again. Let's create a function called request slow mo change. And as I said, it does a pretty straightforward job. If the slow mo is not active, it starts it. If it is, it ends. So, sounds like we're all done here for the basic script. Now let's go to our level and add it to it. Instance the child scene, slow mo control. Boom, here we go. Go to the level script. Whoopsie, I just realized I wrote it all inside of the level script. No, that's not what we want. Here we go. Now, inside of our level, add a reference to the slow-mo controller, but how can we request the change? Probably you would like to assign a certain key for that. So we go to project, project settings, input map, and we create a new action. Let's say ability slow-mo. Add a key for that, and let's say it's gonna be a space. Good. So now in the level script, we create a physics process function. Inside of it, we check if you press this key that you assigned, then we request a small slow-mo change. Now let's check. Now I press space and as you can see, it's all slow down. But it's a little bit rough, don't you think? So the base is ready, but you probably want to enhance it. For instance, make it a smooth transition instead of switching from normal time scale to the slow-mo right away. And that's quite easy to do. Go to your slow-mo controller, add a twin to that, and inside of the screen add a reference to it. By the way, I have made a twin tutorial on my channel, so if you are not familiar with twins, I highly recommend you to first check that video out. But anyways, I want to make two more functions, which are called enter slow-mo animation and exit slow-mo animation. After we do this animation with the twin, it will cause the star slow motion. And after we exit it and the animation is done, we call the end slow-mo method. Oh, and I just realized that we forgot to change our slow-mo active variable here. So change it here, in start slow-mo make it true and in end slow-mo make it false. Let's come back to our enter slow-mo animation. Here is just basic twin stuff. Just in case, stop all the other twin 
processes at the moment. We start interpolating the property time scale of the engine from its current value to slow mode time scale. It will take half a second and here is just the function I will use for that. You may change it, you may not, it's up to you. Just some cosmetic stuff. And we start this. And here we wait until the stream ends and we do the respective actions, starting the slow motion or ending it. Same here. The only thing is we go th from our current time to our normal time scale. And it takes quarter of a second. What I won't change here right away is the time we use for that. So let's make two more variables. Slow mo enter time and slow mo quit time which respectively takes half a second and quarter of a second. And let's paste them inside of this twin call. Now, here in our request slow-mo change method, instead of calling the start or end slow-mo method, we call their animation. Now, let's check it once again. Go to your level scene. As you can see, it's a very smooth animation. I press spacebar, press spacebar again. Boom. So it takes some time and that's what we wanted. So, that's it for this tutorial. Now you know how to make your game cool with slow motion, you know how to use that, and you can smooth transition that. Thank you for watching, I hope it was helpful and you liked it, and as always, if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ives and until next time.